The new Ophir Starbright is the most advanced of Ophir's family of handheld laser meters. It supports all standard Ophir sensors for measuring average power, single shot as well as repetitive pulse energy and frequency, power, position and size of your laser beam, irradiance and dosage of UV and visible LEDs. It has a large brightly lit color display for enhanced visibility and the navigation panel and soft key controls make it easy to use. Multiple languages are available. It has a USB flash disk interface for onboard logging of data, as well as USB and RS-232 connectivity to a PC. Logged data files can be uploaded to the PC, or the Starbright can be operated while connected to the PC. Starbright works with the Ophir StarLab laser measurement software. A LabVIEW driver and COM object make it easy for developers to integrate laser beam measurements into external systems. It's regarding the user experience that Starbright really shines. We've done this in two areas, ease of basic use and advanced use. In this set of short videos, we'll walk through the various functions and capabilities. Each video segment will show you how to use a particular feature or set of features so you can go right to the item you need. For all its advanced capabilities, Starbright is a very intuitive instrument and you likely will not need to check the user guide much. Still, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us, either directly or via your local Ophir representative. First, we'll turn on the meter with no sensor attached. After initializing, we come to the settings screen. Here, we can set the baud rate for RS-232 communication, full-scale voltage for the analog output, display language, line frequency, 50 or 60 hertz, according to the setting in your country, color scheme, for example, to get the maximum contrast when using various safety goggles, and time and date. Note the short explanatory text for each setting. We can also zero the instrument, which we recommend to do periodically, every other month or so, to zero out electrical biases that sometimes build up. When we now connect a sensor, note how the Starbright automatically restarts as it reads the sensor's calibration and related data stored in the sensor's EEPROM. We've connected a thermal sensor used for measuring average power as well as single shot energy. Here we set the basic parameters of our measurement. The available settings are defined according to the specific type of sensor. Those definitions are part of the calibration and related data programmed into the sensor. Average power, single shot energy, or pulsed power. We'll start with power. Range, auto ranging or manual ranges. Again, which ranges are offered depends on the sensor. Laser or wavelength. Average, this displays a running average of the readings over the selected time rather than the actual real time reading useful when trying to measure an unstable beam. Offset, for cancelling out unwanted effect of background light on the measurement. We'll now set the thermal sensor to measure energy. A thermal sensor is too physically slow to measure energy per pulse in a repetitively pulsed beam. We use other sensors for that. But it can measure energy of a single pulse when there will be at least a few seconds before another pulse arrives. The ready indicator means the sensor is now ready for another pulse. Range, note that there's no auto-ranging option for energy measurements. Laser, or wavelength. Threshold, you can select from three different trigger levels below which the sensor will ignore pulses. Lower the threshold level if the sensor isn't responding to very small or low energy pulses. Raise the threshold level to prevent false triggering on background noise. Thermopile sensors, in addition to being able to measure single shot pulse energy, can also be used to measure pulsed power, meaning instantaneous power of a laser pulse. This feature is unique to Starbright. In pulsed power mode, set the sensor parameters as you would in energy mode, range, laser, wavelength, threshold. Enter the known length of the pulse, fire the pulse, and Starbright then displays the instantaneous power during the pulse. 
This can be particularly useful, for example, for measuring high power laser beams using a short exposure with a lower power sensor. When using a photodiode sensor for measuring low average powers, some parameters are a bit different than for thermal sensors. Range, note the DBM option, relevant in telecom and similar fiber applications at the sort of low powers for which these sensors are commonly used. Laser or wavelength, because their spectral response is not flat, these sensors are calibrated with a full spectral curve covering their defined spectral range. The drop-down wavelength window displays a number of default favorite wavelengths you can choose from. If the wavelength you need is not one of the displayed favorites, you can select any of the favorites, or none, then click on Modify and change the currently selected wavelength to any other wavelength in the specified range. After all, all wavelengths in the range are in there. You can use this to set up a favorite wavelengths list to suit your needs. Any changes made here are automatically saved to the sensor's memory, so they'll move with the sensor if you change instruments. Filter in, out for sensors such as this one that have a removable attenuating filter. In some applications such as photolithography or UV curing, for example, it's important to monitor and control the total energy deposited over time on a surface from a possibly low-power CW beam. This is known as exposure. With a photodiode sensor connected, go to exposure mode. After setting up the basic parameters such as power range and wavelength as usual, you can measure the total exposure using two timeout modes, manual, press start to begin and then stop to end. Total exposure or deposited energy is displayed. Alternatively, you can select timeout mode to preset the exposure time. Select timeout mode and then use the navigation key to follow the arrow and select the desired timeout interval. Press start to begin the measurement and then Starbright will automatically stop after the preset time is up. This feature is unique to Starbright. We'll now connect a pyroelectric sensor used for measuring energy per pulse of a repetitively pulsed beam. Note that some energy sensors, particularly the most sensitive models, are actually based on photodiode rather than pyroelectric detectors, but the operation is the same. For the most accurate reading when using a pyroelectric sensor with any Ophir meter, we recommend that you perform zeroing with the meter and the specific sensor connected. Once done, you won't need to do that again for this sensor as long as it's being used with the same meter type, in this case, Starbright. When you change the meter types, you'll want to re-zero the sensor. Here, we set energy or power. For any beam whose energy per pulse the pyro sensor can measure, it can also measure the beam's average power. Exposure measures the total accumulated energy over the set measurement time. Range. Note again that there's no auto range option for energy measurements. Laser or wavelength. Depending on the type of absorber used in your sensor, such as metallic or the broadband BF or BB absorbers, there might be just a few discrete wavelength settings or a full curve with the option to modify. Pulse width. This sets the maximum pulse width, the time window during which a given pulse is integrated, held, and measured. Choosing a given maximum pulse width setting determines, of course, the maximum pulse repetition rate, as can be seen in the specifications. Ophir's Pyro-C line of energy sensors give you up to five different pulse width settings to choose from, so you won't fall between the cracks by having a pulse width too long for the one setting, but a rep rate too high for the other setting. Diffuser. If your sensor is one of the models equipped with a removable diffuser, here is where you'll tell Starbright whether the diffuser is now in or out. Threshold. These sensors have a user-adjustable minimum threshold to improve measurement accuracy in noisy environments by setting the threshold to just the right level to allow your pulses in while keeping noise out. Average. 
This displays a running average of readings over a selected time period rather than the actual real-time reading to enable measuring unstable beams. When we measure energy, we're shown the pulse energy as well as the repetition rate. In power mode, we're shown the average power of this same beam. In exposure mode, we can measure exposure from when we press start to stop. Alternatively, we can preset the time or the total number of pulses over which we want the exposure measured. We'll now connect a beam track sensor. Beam track is a family of sensors that measure power as well as position of the beam centroid and for most of the models also beam size, all at the same time. Most settings have the same meanings as they do for other sensors. Note how the XY position of the beam is displayed, as is the beam size when the beam is within a specified distance from the center. A schematic graphical representation is shown as well. A useful feature of Starbright is that you can zero the axes of the position display so that the beam's present position becomes the zero point. The X and Y coordinates are now referred to as the X and Y offsets. A range of display formats is available. By clicking Menu Display, you can choose the standard digital readout with bar graph display. You can also choose a changing bar graph where the color changes depending on the reading's percentage of full scale. You can select Analog Needle with the option of using Persist to see the recent history of where the needle has been or Zoom to zoom in on the area of the reading. You can use a line graph to graph laser output as a function of time, especially useful, for example, for fine-tuning laser power. You can adjust the values of the y-axis and the horizontal sweep time to what's most convenient for you. Reset zeroes the graph. You can have the screen display real-time statistics for the current measurement. You can set pass-fail criteria to give a warning when the measured value goes above or below your preset limits. You can use a pulse chart to graph laser output progressively, not as a function of time. This is especially useful when measuring the energy of a laser that doesn't pulse repeatedly at a fixed frequency. When you need to do more than just measure, Starbright offers you a range of functions for more advanced processing of readings. Average. This displays a running average of the readings over the selected time rather than the actual real-time reading, useful when trying to measure an unstable beam. Fixed offset subtracts a preset value that you define from all subsequent readings. Scale factor is a factor by which all subsequent readings will be multiplied. For example, when you're measuring after a known beam splitter but want to display the calculated value before the beam splitter. Normalize allows you to normalize readings to a reference value. For example, you might measure the power coming out of the laser and then display all subsequent measurements, say at various points along the rest of your optical setup, as a unitless ratio relative to the reference value. Density displays the readings in units of power or energy per unit area. You're prompted to enter the beam size in either one dimension if it's a circle or two dimensions if it's rectangular. You can also combine functions. Here we can see that we're applying averaging and are in density mode. When we navigate off to the right of the screen, we see the details of a scale factor and a fixed offset that have also been applied. This is a feature unique to Starbright. To log data on board Starbright, we insert a USB flash disk in the slot and then simply go to the log function in the menu. We can later access the file storage and we can upload the stored data from the flash disk to a PC running the Ophir StarLab software application. Note that when using any of Starbright's special functions such as density or normalize or any combined functions, Starbright logs the actual function results. This is a feature unique to Starbright. Mm -hmm.